You really are such a useless daughter-in-law. What purpose does your presence serve in this household? I can't fathom why my son chose to marry someone like you. What did I do wrong this time? I'm currently occupied with work, so I have limited time for conversation. Quit using work as a justification. Your earnings are hardly substantial, if at all. You ought to show some gratitude for being allowed to reside here, despite your modest income. It would be helpful if you could contribute more by assisting with the household chores occasionally. I find it surprising that I am solely responsible for all the household tasks lately, considering our relationship as mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. I truly appreciate all the efforts you're putting in for our well-being. Still, I've helped you out whenever I've had the time. I contribute to the household chores diligently every day upon returning from work. I understand that on certain occasions, I have to work overtime and cannot assist with the household tasks due to my professional commitments. I'm putting in my utmost effort, so I would prefer if you didn't speak to me in such a manner. I really don't like how you talk back to me like this. Stop being so arrogant to know your place. I didn't mean to offend you if I did. I was just telling you the truth about my situation. I just feel so sorry for Daniel. He really did choose the wrong woman. There were so many more better options for a beautiful guy like him. That's a little offensive, isn't it? I don't think he thinks that way about me at all. We both decided that we're both going to work even after getting married and that we're both going to do the housework. There are times when I'm busier than him. I can't be doing the housework all the time. If you really need help with the housework, then you should be asking him as well. Why don't you ask him at all? You always pick on me even though you should know that I'm busy. You really don't understand at all, do you? Are you seriously trying to make your husband do all the housework for you? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that he should help out from time to time. It's not fair right now because I do so much housework even though we both work full-time jobs. Your entire thought process is just wrong. You shouldn't be making your man have to do any of the housework. Try to change the way you think. We actually managed to share the housework pretty evenly before we moved in with you. You've been complaining so much that it's been difficult to balance things evenly between us. How about we try to get along and figure out how we can split up the workload evenly? Sorry, but I declined. Would you please think about it? I'm really doing my best to make sure that everyone's happy. I want to try to get along with you seeing as we live with each other. I don't like having to argue with you every single day. Could we please try to get along? I'm getting very stressed these days having to argue and correct your mistakes all the time. I don't think that I can stand being around you any longer. I had no idea that you felt that way about me. You had no idea? You really are kind of obtuse, aren't you? It annoys me that you barely do any of the housework even though you're a wife. I've been doing the housework every single day since I got married. I don't understand how you can't do the same. Who do you think you are? Well, times have changed now. It's no longer a given that the wife does all the housework. We're in very different situations as well. I'm working a full-time job. Please try to understand that there are some differences between us. Let's just try to get along. I just thought of a great way to solve all of this. A way to solve this? Great! What's the idea? Yeah, it's perfect. I'm not going to be stressed because of you anymore. That would be great for both of us. Would you let me know what your plan is? You'll find out soon enough. Look forward to it because it's such a great idea. Can you not tell me now? No, I need some time to prepare. Okay, I'll look forward to it then. A few days later. Hey, Katie. You have a business trip planned this weekend, right? Yeah, I do. I'm going to be gone for a couple of days. What's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. 
I just wanted to double check with you just in case. I have all the dates on my schedule written down on the calendar. Also, could you talk to your mom for me? About what? You know that we don't get along that well with each other. She told me that she thought of an idea to solve our problems. She still hasn't told me what the idea is, and now she's not replying to any of my texts. I'm a little worried because she's ignoring me completely. I see. Wait, what? Is that all you're going to say? Please, would you try to help me out? You know that we both work full-time jobs and that I don't have that much free time. She's trying to force me to do all the housework, but that's just not possible. I think it's unfair that I'm the only one she's forcing to help with the housework. You should do some housework too. How do you feel about this problem? Would you please stop trying to involve me in your problems? This has nothing to do with me. What did you just say? I'm your husband. I am a man and I really don't want to have to get involved in a fight between two women. You guys need to solve this yourselves. Please leave me out of this and not mention this to me ever again. I'm already stressed working my job. I don't need any extra problems to solve. How could you say that to me? I'm also working a full-time job. I'm stressed out too. It's your mom and your wife. You need to help us solve this problem. Yeah, I know that she's my mom. I told you I don't want to get involved in pointless arguments. My dad doesn't get involved in any of these arguments, right? I'm going to do the same thing as him and stay out of this. You can't just pretend that this isn't your problem as well. You are the one that convinced me to move in with your family. You have a responsibility to at least try to make her get along with me. I was the one that got us this house that we could all live in. This is the least you can do for me. You really need to calm down. Stop getting so worked up about such a small problem. You need to relax or you're going to get even uglier. I've had enough now. I can't believe you're not going to try to help me out. This isn't my problem. Why should I help you out? I hope you enjoy your business trip. I really don't mind you being gone for a long time. There's no need to be in a rush to come home. I'm going on a work trip. It's not a vacation. Still, it's some precious time that I'll have by myself. I'll make sure to use it to try to relax. Yeah, go ahead and do that. We're going to enjoy our time without you in the house too. Okay, fine. I really don't like how you're treating me right now. I think we need to have a talk too. Please make some time for us to have a serious conversation when I get back. There's some serious problems in our relationship too. I am not happy at all. Final day of the business trip. There is no longer a place for you to live in this house. What did you just say? I was surprised to receive a message from you all of a sudden. I hope that you enjoy your life on the streets. You are officially homeless as of today. I have no idea what you're talking about. Would you please explain to me what's going on? There's nothing for me to explain. It's exactly as I just said. You'll understand what's happening once you come home. I guess it's not your home anymore, though. We sold the house so it's no longer our property. You're joking, right? I'm not joking at all. We sold the house while you were gone on your business trip. All of us moved into a new place without you. That's why I'm telling you that you have no place to live. I hope that you enjoy your life as a homeless woman on the streets. Are you serious about all of this? I don't think it was a very smart thing to do. What are you talking about? This fixes all the problems that we've been having. Today we're going on a family vacation and staying in a nice hotel. We're planning to move into our new place tomorrow. We've already hired a moving company to deliver all our belongings to our new place. So you guys have planned this all out then? You're not at your new place yet, right? No, not yet. 
It took us a little longer than we planned because we had to wait for you to go on a business trip. I told Daniel that we didn't have to keep this a secret. It kind of seemed like he was a little scared of you. I hope he can live stress-free now that you're not living with us. So he was involved in this plan of yours as well then? That's why he kept on checking with me about my business trip. He kept on asking me the exact times I would leave and come back. This was all planned out by all of you guys. Of course we planned this together. We're a family after all. You're the only one that I don't consider as family. We sold off the house on the day you left for your business trip. There's no place for you to go home to now. Enjoy your miserable life on the streets. Thanks for letting me know at least. I'm sure I'll be so much happier without you guys anyway. Yeah, we feel the same way too. Never show your face in front of us ever again. That's it. Goodbye. The next day. Would you please answer the phone? It's an emergency. I need to talk to you right now. Please just pick up. What do you want from me? I thought that you never wanted to see my face ever again. Some problems came up. There are some things that I really need to talk to you about. Would you please just pick up the phone? Unfortunately, I still don't want to see or talk to you at all. I'm not going to pick up the phone. What's the matter anyway? What's the emergency? If you need to tell me something, you can tell me here. I am not going to talk to you on the phone. I'm crying so much right now. What are you talking about? Apparently, the sale of the house didn't go through. We've already bought the new house that we're moving into. Without the money from the sale of the old house, we can't pay for the new one. What the hell are we meant to do? Why should I know? None of this is my responsibility. You guys did this to me behind my back. Figure it out yourselves. I wonder why there was a problem with the sale of the house. I tried asking him, but he wouldn't tell me the details. That house is my property. It's under my name, so I stopped the sale. Wait, what did you just say? I knew that you guys needed the money from the sale of the house to move. I contacted the real estate agent yesterday and got the sale canceled. I'm so glad that I noticed before the sale went through. Although the sale never would have worked in the first place. The house is in my name, so you would have needed my permission and signature for the sale to go through. Did you really think that something like this would really work? Is your entire family full of idiots? I don't understand what's going on. How could the house be in your name? That's just not possible. Isn't that house in Daniel's name? It's his house, right? No, it's not. I was the one that purchased that house. No way! You've got to be lying. I always thought that place was his. He was the one that bought the house. Did you seriously think that? There's no way that he could afford to buy a house. You know how little he earns, right? He'd be lucky to rent out an old apartment room with his salary. Wait, what are you talking about now? Is his salary really that low? Yeah, I thought you would have known that. I'm the one that's paying off the loans for the house. There's just no way you guys could sell off the house. I had a couple of missed calls from unknown numbers. I guess that it was the real estate agency calling me to check what was going on. I really didn't expect you guys to do something this stupid though. Anyway, it was a good opportunity for me to find out how crazy you guys are. Would you please hold on a minute? I'm having trouble trying to process what you just told me. What part of it are you struggling to process? I thought that I explained everything to you very clearly. You're telling me that the house that we were all living in is actually your property. Are you really the one that's paying off the loans? I still can't believe any of this. Well, you're going to have to believe it because it's the reality. How are we meant to pay for our new place then? Are you seriously asking me that? 
We were planning to pay for our new house with the money from the sale of that house. We already paid the down payments and we have no savings left at all. What the hell are we supposed to do? I have no idea why you're asking me this. What do you expect me to do? Please figure out a way to solve this. This is all your fault. You need to help us out. How is any of this my fault? You guys decided to do this without me knowing. You and the rest of your family need to figure out what to do. You told me that I'm not part of your family, right? I have no intention of helping you guys out at all. You're his wife, though. You need to do something to help him out. Why do I need to do anything? Also, I'm not his wife anymore. What did you just say? My ex-husband was a piece of trash, so I got a divorce. Have you not heard from him at all? What are you talking about? Are you talking about my son? Yeah, who else would I be talking about? We discussed this a couple of days ago and decided. I had no idea he planned to try to sell my house, though. He didn't mention that when we had our conversation. Are you telling me that we're complete strangers to each other now? Yeah, pretty much. Have you finally realized that you guys are the ones that might become homeless? Are you seriously going to do this to us? I had no idea things would end up like this. Are you going to abandon us completely? Yeah, I don't see why I should help. You were telling me to enjoy my life on the streets. I don't feel like helping people that would say that to me. I'm sure you guys did this to kick me out of the house, but I guess it's kind of backfired. Now look who's going to be without a place to live. Don't worry, we're going to be completely fine. He still has a job, so we won't have any financial problems. I guess we're just going to have to find a different place to live. Although I have no idea what I'm going to do about the money for a new place. That's a problem that you guys are going to have to figure out yourselves. I have nothing to do with you guys anymore. It was actually the perfect timing for us to get a divorce, actually. I was kind of looking for a reason to kick you guys out of the house. I can't believe this. How dare you talk to me like that? Are you seriously not going to help us out? Of course I'm not going to help. We're strangers to each other. Did your husband know about any of this? I didn't think that he was the kind of person that would agree to something like this. He didn't know any of the details. How am I meant to tell him that we have no place to live now? What are you going to do about this? You've messed up my plans completely. Stop blaming me for any of this, you old hag. How about you take responsibility for what you've done? This was the plan that you had to solve the problems between us, right? We don't have to argue every day now that we're not going to be living together. This is perfect for both of us. Yeah, I still don't want to live with you at all. Still. This isn't how I planned things to be. I have no idea what I'm going to do from now on. Who cares about tomorrow? I'm happy that we don't have to live together anymore. Problem solved, right? Please don't ever contact me again. I've got to get going now. Goodbye, you old hag. I hope you and your family enjoy your lives on the street. After that, Lona opted to confront Daniel to verify the truth of Katie's claims. Ultimately, he confessed that it was indeed Katie who financed the house, and it was registered under her name. Lona's husband remained completely oblivious to these events and became enraged upon discovering the truth of the situation. Their entire household is engulfed in a massive dispute at the moment, and there is a possibility that they will have to separate permanently. She attempted to covertly re-enter Katie's residence without consent but was apprehended by law enforcement and issued a restraining order. They are presently without a place of residence and are currently experiencing homelessness. Katie ultimately sold the expansive family residence and acquired a solitary high-rise condominium for her own occupancy. Her life appears to have undergone a remarkable improvement following the dissolution of her marriage. Hey Carrie. It's been a long time since we talked. How do you do? 
I think the last time we spoke was at our high school reunion last year, right? Oh, hello, Erin. Yes, it's been a long time. What do you need? You speak to me coldly. I know we haven't spoken in a while, but we were very close. Why should that make a difference? What do you mean? Of course it makes a difference. You were my best friend in high school. Could you be more aware of yourself? I know what are you talking about? I'm talking about what happened at a high school reunion. I'm talking about you leaving and having an affair with one of our old classmates. He just got married a couple of weeks ago. They divorced because they couldn't control themselves. Well, that. I didn't know you knew about that. Of course, I know. Everyone at the reunion was talking about it. We're from a small town and we all know each other. Everyone knew what was going on within an hour. I didn't realize that I was so popular. Just to be someone else's family wrecker. I'm not sure that's anything to be proud of. But at least everybody is talking about me. But anyway, that doesn't really matter. Me and him broke up a long time ago, so there is nothing more to talk about on that topic. Now I've started to meet other people, and my life is better than before. Oh, I understand. So why are you contacting me? We hardly talk at the reunion. I didn't think there's anything to talk about between us. To be honest, I didn't expect to talk to you. Well, I live in Chicago right now. Chicago? And I have just found out that your husband is one of the clients of the company I work for. Oh, I understand. We didn't have a chance to talk for long, but he told me he would be away from home for six months for work. Yes, I think he'll be there until around September. He said that he got the assignment because his manager liked him. It's a way to deal with what happened. Why didn't you go with him? I can't imagine being away from someone I love for so long. You still don't have kids, right? No, we don't have kids, but things won't go well. It would be a major blow to my career if I had to be absent for so long. You can quit your job. Then you could have gone to Chicago with him. It's not as simple as that. Many factors led to my decision to stay here. Firstly, we just started a big project at my work a week ago. I'm on the lead on this particular project, so it would be a big hurdle to give it up. And even if I could delegate control to someone else, I don't want to leave my co-worker behind while I'm doing something important. Oh, really? I don't think your career is important to you. But I guess the decision has already been made, so it doesn't matter now. Hey, I'm sorry, but I've got to go. A client is calling me. I'll text you later, all right? No problem. Talk to you later. Six months later. Hey, Carrie, how are you? I'm fine. For what? Another cold reception. Do you always greet everyone like that? Why am I excited to receive a text from someone like you? How about a person like me? What did I do? I know you, Erin. You always have an ulterior motive when you come into contact with anyone. What do you want? So sad. That is a really harsh thing to accuse someone of. Can't I just want to have a chat with a friend? Okay. What would you like to chat about? Well, there's something going on that I need to tell you about. Eric lived with me while he was on business in Chicago. Eric, my husband. Yes, we've lived together for the past few months. I don't know what to say. I know. I'm sure it's pretty surprising. Perhaps you are quite confused. I understand that. Your husband was sent to work away from home, and then someone you used to be quite close to took him away from you. I'm sure there's a lot to take in. But really... It's your fault for making him live alone in an unfamiliar place for so long. Of all the people, I'm the one who knows how that feels. It was not a good feeling. I had to move to Chicago for things that weren't my fault and had to learn how to manage on my own in a new city. I understand the loneliness he feels and that brought us together. Don't try to make what you're doing okay by being poetic. Sorry, I'm only like that when I'm in love. An affair with a married man is nothing to brag about. Especially when the person you are talking to is the man's wife. I think you're correct. However, I'm not trying to brag. I just feel like you should know it. He was far away from home and felt lonely, so I went to him. You should be glad he doesn't suffer. Is that so? You are proud of your hand in another couple's marriage? At this point, I'm starting to think that having an affair with a married man is just your preference. You're just jealous that we're madly in love with each other. We have each other and nothing can stay in our way. I'm a bit sorry I've taken him from you. But with Eric's love, I knew I would get over it soon. Erin, Eric didn't tell you. We've been divorced for a few months now. What? What? 
A lot of things happened before he left. We tried for years to build a happy family, but there were too many bad feelings between us. The time had come to let go, and we both moved on. Besides, given the way he was assigned the quest in the first place, I really don't think it will be the last. Above all, just like I said when we spoke a few months ago, my career is important for me, and our relationship has deteriorated to the point where there's no way I'm going to give it up to pursue him. Oh, he has never said anything about it. Remember when we talked about six months ago? The divorce was finalized approximately two weeks later. So when Eric and I started talking, you were divorced. Exactly. And because we didn't have kids and I planned it in advance, the divorce didn't make much of a difference. It was all said and done pretty quickly. It doesn't really matter at this point. But one thing I'm curious about: When did you and Eric start seeing each other? About four months ago. When did you start living together? Nearly two months ago. And the two of you have never talked about his marriage or anything. I have never asked. But wait a minute, there's something not right. Sometimes he gets phone calls and texts from someone he claims to be his wife. And one day he asked me to stay out of our apartment till evening because he said his wife would come. If that's not you, who was he talking about? Did you visit him when he was in Chicago? No, not even once. All divorce paperwork was handled through our attorney. There was no reason for me to meet him in person. Then why did he tell me that his wife would come visit? Who is he talking about? Perhaps he remarried. With who? If I had to guess, I'd say it's probably the woman he met when we got divorced. What? Did he meet someone when he got a divorce? I told you that our relationship is in turmoil. It was another reason we broke up. Eric isn't really good at being faithful. He had more than one relationship when we were together. Looks like it didn't take him long to remarry and find a way to cheat on his new wife. Wait. Do you know the person he dated when he divorced you? Of course I know. I wanted to have some advantage if someone decided to make it difficult for the divorce proceedings, so I paid to do a full investigation. Part of that investigation was to find out the background of the woman he was dating. Tell me who that is. Now that I think about it, chances are you know her too. Who is that? Her name is Julia. She was the daughter of his own manager before he left for six months on the job. You said Eric is a customer of your company, right? You might have met her at a number of locations. I'm not sure if she's a full-time employee at the company Eric works for, but I've heard that she's also involved in business affairs from time to time. What does she look like? I don't really remember, but she is only 18 years old and only occasionally works at the company, so her father will support her. 18. Some time has passed since the inquest, so she may be nineteen years old. How are they related? She is still very young. I believe that she visited the office when she was still in high school. That's how they initially met. When I questioned Eric about the affair, he said that he fell in love with her from the moment he first saw her. Her father was very angry when he heard about it. That's why he sent Eric on a long business trip so that they had to be apart. It seems that plan did not work out as he expected. For a while, I was really bitter about him getting involved with someone who was so young. But in retrospect, he was never good at being faithful. This is not reasonable. I thought he loves me. I think her family money has a lot to do with his motives as well. Despite Julia's father's initial anger, Eric seems to be very wealthy. Some mutual friends told me that he always splurged on money, as if it never ran out. So I'm pretty sure he's getting quite a bit of money from Julia. How can he do that? She is ten years younger than him. It's disgusting. I agree. It makes me shiver when I think about that relationship. But that's not my business right now. But if all this is true, why don't they live together? Why is he living with me? Looks like they're building a new house. Perhaps they are waiting for construction to be finished and then move in together. A friend of mine who works at the company told me that she is pregnant. So I'm sure they have plans to move in together any time. Is she also pregnant? I heard she will be coming next month. Well,、uh, what does all of this mean to me? Is he just using me as a place to stay until he's ready to move in with her? Does she know about this? I find it funny that you must be so sad. Didn't you text me from the beginning to brag about stealing my husband? So you could say that the pain you're feeling right now is exactly what you hope I'm going to feel. This is different. I don't care about you. Oh. At least you're being honest, I guess. You always get the best grades in high school, and your teachers and boys love you more than anyone else.
You think you are a lot better than everyone else. I always hate you so much. Erin, it's been more than ten years since we graduated high school. Anything that happened in high school is long gone now. Let it be over. I can't let it finish. You have everything and no one wants me. It just isn't fair. I love him very much. I thought it was my destiny to go to the city, and then you came here to do business. It's like the universe is saying that we should be together. I thought I had a once in a lifetime chance to be happy and avenge you all at once. Well, it looks like another woman will get that happiness eventually. I wish her the best of luck in trying to keep him faithful. What should I do? I don't understand. How can you do this to me? I don't know what to do. I do not know what to say to you. Talking to me about it is not going to help. Eric and I have nothing to do with each other anymore. She was his former wife. Yeah, and we got divorced. If I put myself in the middle of his life now, I'd only cause chaos for everyone. I won't get involved in this. Well, what if you only talk to him as a friend of mine? But we are not friends. Not friends? Look, Erin, it doesn't matter how it is asked. Nothing I can do for you. Please help me. I can't. Anyway, I must go. I have a date tonight, and I need to get ready. A date? Are you meeting someone already? I've been single for several months now. No wonder I'm dating. Goodbye, Erin. A few days later. Carrie, Carrie, please help me. Just give me some tips. I wasn't feeling well for the past few days, so I took a pregnancy test. The test result is positive. I don't intend to get pregnant. Eric has left me to live with Julia. My heart hurts so much, and I don't know what to do. Julia came to my office yesterday and told my manager about me having an affair with a client. Eric's company is canceling the contract with us. Rumor has it the company is blaming me for the loss of my contract, and I could be fired any day. All of that on top of being pregnant. I don't really know what to do, Carrie. I always wonder to myself, why can't I be as intelligent as you? I had to move here because my family found out about my relationship with our former classmate. People who have a family, they cut me off and told me that they didn't want to see me again. So I moved here to start a new life. But look at the me now. I thought that Eric would marry me and we would have a baby and build a life together. I told him I was pregnant and he just brushed me off. He said there was no way he would ever divorce again and start rebuilding his life. I don't know what I will do. I would have to raise this child as a single mother, and now I could be unemployed. What should I do, Carrie? Are you there? Please, Carrie. You are smarter than me, and I know you will know what to do. Please give me some advice. Don't leave me all alone like this. Carrie, are you there? If you were a true friend, would you help me now? Carrie, Carrie. After that. Erin's desperation in her last messages made me wonder if Eric was paying child support for her, or if he was going to try to ignore her and the kid altogether. However, that is not important. A DNA test ultimately proved that the baby wasn't even his. Erin still insists the child is Eric's, but the DNA test results don't lie. When that doesn't work, she finally admits that she had a one-night stand with another man. Erin contacted the man she was staying with that night, and he agreed to pay her a lump sum instead of child support, and then disappear from her life. Erin runs away from town and returns to her parents' home while pregnant, but that doesn't last long. After the child was born, she immediately put him up for adoption. Her family immediately rejected her when she did. For Eric, things also don't quite end up being ideal for him. Rumors about his relationship with the manager's daughter began to circulate throughout the company. Some even said that he lured her to marry for money. No one will trust him anymore, and his work efficiency will drop drastically. Last I heard, the company actually nearly declared bankruptcy because of the trouble he started with his relationship with Julia. Hey, Sophia, did you hear about the next month holiday from my son? Holiday? Yes, you know the hotel day trip we are planning. Um, I have heard a little bit about that from my husband. We will all go to the Central Park and Newton Resort with the kids, right? That's true, but you're the half right. So you are planning to join with us? Yes, my husband told me that must have some helps. I plan to buy all the food and pay for the car. No, we will go buy our own car, and Dad will drive us. Mom, I think it's dangerous. I think we should rent a car for the whole family. Dad's eyes is not good as he was young. Also, his driver license is no longer available. I'm sorry, but why don't you sit this one out? 
If I told this to you together why my son, he will get angry and going to flip on me again. So I'm asking you secretly and I hope that you won't told my son about what I said to you. I and my husband are getting older together, we can't know how many years we'll have left to be doing these kinds of family trips. I must to tell you the point that I want only our member family go together. Can you understand for me? You can do that, can't you? I just want my family around me and spend time together without anyone else. Mom, why can you do this with me? I have married Jordan for five years, you daughter-in-law for a long time. It hurted me, Mom. Hurt? What are you talking about? I'm not trying to abandon you or push you out of my house. I was sad when hearing these words from you but I'll do if it pleases you. Thank you for understanding. Family is important to us, I'm glad you understand that these kind of moments are best enjoyed without any outsiders. You know me and my husband and my baby son, and all of my grandkids are related by blood. Mom, are you okay with taking care of all those four children? The trip to Texas is quite long and far that I want to help you something to prepare the food or clothes for the kid. The kid's rooneying around, do you really think you can deal with them by yourself? What? I am sure that you're just jealous of the fact that you weren't invite and won't be able to see what a real amusement park look like. Anyway, I'm already retired so I have the time to take all of my grandchildren to that park. And also, I heard that you decide to drive a car, are you sure? I don't nest to hear any more from you. I have all the experience I needed. The only kid I'm worried about is yours. It'd be much better if she were just to run off, but... <laughs> you don't need to worry about her. She is very good with staying calm and not straying from the adults. But I think it'll be better if I and my husband go there and take care of the kids just as well. Did you insist that I don't be able to look after the kids' juts because W.E.R.E. elderly? I'm just worried that you won't be able to relax while having to look after four children's. You take this like the reason to go with us, right? But stop thinking about that, I will take my daughter with. Oh mom, but she has just given birth, she just has the second child for few weeks. You can't possibly go on vacation with a newborn and also look after two of my kids. Do you have better idea? But I think I am enough to bring these kids with me. I will not ask anyone outside of my family to come along. Mom, I think you can left them at home with me. The weather is too hot and if they can't be taken care of carefully, they will get sick. I think they don't mind to stay at home with me. I am the one who understand them and can make them happy. So don't be worry mom, I think it's the best idea I can give you. Plus without four little kids to look after the whole time you guys will be able to enjoy your trip absolutely not trying to jeopardize this trip, aren't you? Perhaps they don't respect you as a parent that's why you struggle to handle them. But they're all my grandkids and they must have well behaved. Mom. But Bob are suffering asthma whenever he goes to a new place he will get cough really hard. I'm scared he might have an asthma attack when he goes with you guys. If that happens we'll just have him stay at the hotel clean inside the room but he's especially sensitive to allergens at hotels. I think that you are creating many reasons to go with us. I will book the luxury hotel and restaurant that is clean specifically for people that suffer from allergy. So there isn't a thing that my sweetie will stay at home with you. They all come with me, don't talk about that anymore. But, who will take after Bob when you guys go outside? Of course his sister will. Mom, why can you do that? I won't let my literally five years old daughter stay at hotel alone and looks after her brother. She doesn't know what to do. 
Can you reconsider looking after the kids? Being a mom, I won't let them go with you guys if it's not safe enough. I'm sure that my husband will agree with me about lets the kids behind without my supervise. But I'm sure I will be fine if I take care all of them. Mom, you don't understand, if anything happens he has to be taken to the emergency room. I can't let it happen. Oh, you think I will make it happen? No way. Stop being extremely negative like that. This is why I can let you go with us because you will destroy everything and all our beautiful memories. I can't stand outsiders interfering with our family. You always try you told me what I have to do, but sorry, I am old enough to know what is good for me. You don't have to teach me anything. Remember that I made your husband. Stop being so rude and control me, okay? Mom, I am not that mean. I just want to make sure that your trip is perfect without any worry. Because I think if anything bad happens, you will very upset cause your trip failed because I think if anything bad happens, you will very upset cause your trip failed. I just want to help out you and dad and also my husband and his brother. So I will take Judy with us, another daughter-in-law of me. Mom, why can you did that? Where is equal here? But you must be okay with this. I agree to stay at home if Cardin's wife stay at home too, but you can't do that with me. We are at the same standard. Mom, when you go to the hospital, I am the one who showers for you and feed you. Also I cooked food for you every day, taking care of you carefully until you got better. Everyone went to work and there is just me and you there. Why can you see my effort? I've been also trying all of the family activities gathering and do all the best for my husband and my kids. Mom, you made me so disappointed, I believed that time can make you have good look at me, but not. Nothing can change, you always treat me like a stranger. Wow, you're so ridiculous than I think. That's the bare minimum that a wife have to complete, you should be doing those things without any hope that I will consider you as my daughter. Is there something I don't have that the rest of other wives have? Why do you treat me like that? <laughs> I am so surprised when you asked me that question cause you didn't have the right to do that. But I will answer you because I don't want to see some ridiculous and funny story here. You know I have two three handsome and fantastic sons and one of them have really excellent wives that they brought into my family. They all wear really expensive brand of clothes and have graduated famous universities. Also, their family is very rich that they can give them an apartment before they got married. But, look at you, see what you have? Nothing, I even have to buy a house for you and my son. Mom, why can you decide to hate or love someone rely on their price of clothes? I just have never been the one who put all my money into what I wear. I guess the house my dad gave me is pretty simple compared to other house, but it has the good location that we can sell some agricultural products. And our business run excellent. Why don't you accept that? It can be compared to the job of my two great daughter-in-law. Maybe I'm not doing enough to receive your approval, or feel like you don't have any intention or ever accepting me into your family, no matter how hard I try. Oh, Sophia, that's what it means to be a wife and a daughter-in-law. This is your reality. I'd suggest you start getting used to it. You can come to any wedding and birthday party of this family or related, I think it's enough for the person like you. I guess I deserve to include it in more than just those things, don't you think that? But we're not blood relative. You are set ten apart from anyone else. You must to accept the trust. <laughs> I really don't know why my fan static son can love a person like you. You'll never be any more than an outsider. Besides, I'm sure you feel the same way about your parents and the rest of your family. Eweary just bunch of strangers to you as well, you pick your relatives over us any time. It's nothing personal.
That's not true. I want to be included in your family, but you're always treating me like trash. How about your daughter's husband? Did you treat him like this? Of course not. He's come from a rich family. He can pay for all my bill and make my daughter happy. He's my family's member. That don't have to argue. Just accept that you will be an outsider forever. That will never change until I died, okay? It's better that you just move on already instead of winning like this whole time. Fine, you're right. I just come from an agriculture tradition family. I just have to accept that and move on. Thank you for explaining to me. Now I understand what is important with you. You just care about money, not anything else. Yes, but that's the thing you don't have. I promise just focus on being the best wife you can be to my son and the best mother to my grandkids that's all I need from you. I promise just focus on being the best wife you can be to my son and the best mother to my grandkids that's all I need from you. Hey mom, I heard that dad is in TH hospital now, right? What happened with him? Yes, no he have his kidneys treated he also told me he's going to need 24-hour care. From now on I hope he has a speedy recovery. I'm not sure how we're going to handle his care once he comes back from the hospital. We were having so much fun last month while we were on vacation. I didn't think his condition would worsen so quickly I'm sure he'll be okay, if there's anything we can do just let us know. Now, I will come to the hospital with you mom. Sophia, what I have to do? Is there anyone with you? Did I have to buy something? No one here, just me and my husband, my kid are busy with their work and they just call and ask some question. They just call and ask about dad's status now but none of them came. I and my husband will come so we can discuss about dad and we will do all the best thing we can. Dad also needs nursing care after he discharged from the hospital. What? Are you told me that you will come? Yes, my husband asked me that we should come along. Sophia, how many times I have told you that all this things about dad's issues is my family's responsibility. My family members will discuss about this and will decide what will happen with my husband. This is nothing that you can care about, you know? But he's going to need specialized care going forward, isn't he? You don't need to concern yourself with our affairs. Don't come as you wish. I'll stay at home and tell my husband that he can go there alone. Yes, you should do that. Me and my children will decide what to do you don't have to get involved with this. I'll keep myself out of your family's affairs good. Good. You would only slow us down. At the end of the day, we have his best interests at heart. I can't trust that you will know what he needs. Yes. This is why I hate talking with you, the people outside my family. Honestly, all you do is try to interfere with my family. Nothing more. Even the stupid doctor in this hospital are like this, always trying to interfere. So do us all a favor and don't even try to involve yourself with my family again. Yes, mom, I understand it, I brought it up the first place. That's all you do, isn't it? You think you just need to apologize and all will be forgiven. I guess that you're so happy now because my dad admit to the hospital so sudden. Mom, I can understand that you don't like me because I came from the normal family, I'm not rich. But why can you think something like that about me? It's so unreasonable. I just know that you hate me and my husband, I can tell what you're really thinking. That's not even remotely true, Mom. To think I have to call you my daughter-in-law. Well, nobody is forcing you? Especially since you don't even consider me as family member. Ben insists that I treat you nicely, that's why I have to do it. But if it wasn't for him I would have barred you from ever interacting with our family. I can figure as much. 
Honestly, you, not my husband should be suffering in the hospital right now. What are you saying, mom? I think it's crossing the line a bit. All you do is push my buttons. My poor husband shouldn't be sick now, you ought to be sick instead of him. I try to treat you nicely because of my son, but you never show me any respect. I wish my son would have married his first love, at least she wasn't a spineless worm like you are. Hi, Sophia your dad Finn Ally being released from the hospital after the caring plan of the best doctor there. Glad to hear it mom, what have you guys agreed on that? Was your husband at home? He went to work from the early morning mom. Okay, I will tell you ah instead. You'll be the one who looking after my husband from now on, after the discussion with my daughter, we decide that to let him living with you and your husband. You will be caring for him for the foreseeable future. I will help around the house so son be worried dear. What have you just said? I can't understand that. Why dad have come to live in NMY house? You insist that I'll forever be an outsider and so as an outsider and a stranger. I'm not going to involve myself in the affairs of some family. I really don't understand mom. I have to work in tactic care of Moo business. I don't have much time. Also I have to children I have to take them to show and teach them every day. I can't take care for another task you know. Don't be silly, everything will be fine and you can do all of it, that's your responsibility. I am your mother-in-law so you have to do whatever I said you know. Mom, I am your daughter-in-law, not your puppet that I will do everything you told me. I don't owe you anything, now respect no irreverence or anything. Especially after I spent years trying to gain you approval. You should take care of him from your own. Don't rely on me, I can't take it. I and my husband decide to not involve in anything you told us anymore. We are adults and we are do what we want. What? You told my son to betray me? No, he just do what he want because he's too tired of listening to you and making you please. That's ridiculous. I can't accept that. About dad, you can hire a nurse to look after him or something. Like you said, it's none of your concern. But we are all depending on you. You treat me like a maid of this family and then you expect me just to go along with? And whenever you have something hard, you push all that for me? I won't accept that, now I and my husband will living our life so you don't ever care about us. This is the last time I told you about this. So please accept that and let us free mom. I hope you have a good health and happy forever. Completely, my husband reluctantly agreed to help with the process of getting his dad elderly nursing care, but demanded that they agreed and never contacting me about anything ever again. They may have been good grandparents to my children, but the way they always cut me out of any family gatherings. I allow them to go along with my husband, but my in-laws are not permitted to visit on their own so far neither of the kids have asked to go see their grandparents. Finally, dad omit to the elderly caring home and mom visits him at the bare minimum. It might be very difficult for them to change their views at that age, so I don't expect much. I just hope they never try to get involved in my life again. On the other hand, my husband and my parents have been getting along very nicely. Are you sleeping? Bonita! Good morning! What's up? Did I forget something? You're still home, right? You're inside your house, right? Of course, Daddy. The wedding ceremony is at 3 p.m., so I'll be at the church by noon to get ready. I'm eating right now. Lock all the doors and windows at once. Don't come to the church under any circumstance. Daddy, what are you talking about? Cancel the wedding. Don't leave the house, do you understand? What? What do you mean?
cancel the wedding? Am I making myself clear? Do not set foot outside, okay? Daddy? What happened? Why are you saying all this? You were looking forward to our wedding. I'm getting confused with you suddenly telling me to cancel the wedding. You know who is coming. You know who? You don't mean? Mother, do you? Yes, she's who I'm referring to. Melon's younger sister, Mela, just contacted me. Melon left the house early this morning. No one can get a hold of her. Mela is afraid Melon overheard her when she was telling your grandparents about your wedding. I don't believe it. Oh, it must have been. Daddy, please don't get upset. I'm the one who told Aunt Mela about the wedding. Aunt Mela has always been on my side. And I really like her. Why would I be upset? I don't mind that you told Mela. I like her as well. She was great help to me during the divorce. I understand why you wanted to let her know about your wedding. It's neither you nor Mela's fault. Even if your mother does know, no one could have imagined she'd dare show her face at the wedding. Even if ten years have passed. I agree. But just because suddenly she left the house doesn't necessarily mean she's heading this way. She may be going somewhere else. For ten years, she's lived at your grandparents' house and hardly left home. It is suspicious she would pick today of all days to suddenly go on a trip. And the kitchen knife is missing. Missing? Does that mean? Bonita, I understand why you don't want to cancel the wedding. But we need to be careful. I'm begging you, just for today, do not leave your house. I understand. I understand, but... I'm sorry. Bonita, I feel really bad about this. I'm both shocked and frustrated by this. But we can't take a chance. We don't know what'll happen. Daddy, you did nothing wrong? Why are you apologizing? She's the one who should be apologizing. Please give my brain a minute to catch up. I'm just so confused. Anyhow, this is the situation we're in. Is Alex with you? Yes, he's sitting right next to me. We're looking at your messages together. Promise me you won't leave his side. I'll head to the church to see what's going on. If I see Mother there, I'll contact you right away. Thank you, Daddy. But Daddy, please be careful. Promise me. If something happened to you, I wouldn't be able to deal with it. Don't worry, I'll be fine. I promise I won't do anything that will put me in harm's way. Bonita? Where are you? Isn't today your wedding day? Bonita? I know you can see my messages. If you don't send me a reply, I guess I'll just have to go to your house. I know you know who I am. How do you know my WhatsApp 1D? That's not important. I want to know about your wedding. I can't believe you didn't tell me. I'm so sad. After all, I am your mother. I don't consider you to be my mother. Bonita, don't say such cruel things. As your mother, I want to see my baby girl in her wedding dress. I want to see you walk down the aisle. So, can't you invite me to your wedding? There's no way I'd ever invite you to my wedding. Do you remember what you did to me ten years ago? Of course, I remember. There was a man who had a crush on me, but for some reason, he fell in love with you. As a result, you were put in a dangerous situation, right? That's not what happened at all. I'll never forget it. You offered me your own daughter to your lover. Just because your lover promised to marry you if he could, you know, with me. How could you? You're so disgusting. If daddy hadn't saved me, 
Oh, I still have nightmares about it. How could you do such a thing to your own child? It's all a misunderstanding. That man, he lied to you and your father. He twisted the facts so he wouldn't get arrested. Please believe me. I won't believe you. When I called out to you for help, do you remember what you said to me? It's your own fault for leading him on, you child seductress. It's been ten years, but I'll never forget it. I hate you from the bottom of my heart. I'm done playing nice. You're still a brat. That's right, you stole my lover and my husband from me. I'm sure you seduced your husband with your petty charms. You haven't changed at all. I'm really glad I cut off all ties to you. You act so high and mighty. And what comes out of your mouth isn't pretty. You know all of this is your own fault. If you had only listened to me, I would be leading a luxurious life now. My lover, he's a terribly wealthy man. So, that's the type of man you wanted to spend the rest of your life with? And it didn't matter that you were married, you betrayed dad. Moreover, you used your own daughter as a prop in your selfish plan. You haven't changed at all. You are exactly the same. No matter how much pain you've caused others, you don't feel any remorse. You're the one who needs to be remorseful. Don't make me laugh. You stole your own mother's happiness. And now, you think you have a shot at happiness? There's no way that'll happen. I forbid it. No way. You're the last person on earth that deserves to be happy. I'll ruin it for you. I can't wait to see you walk down the aisle. Do you know what you were trying to do? Don't make Lydia's life a mess again. I beg you, leave us alone. Oh, it's you. The man who threw me out, my ex-husband. Did you come to help Bonita, again? What do you plan to do to Bonita? That's easy. Revenge. It's Bonita and I who want revenge. Don't be silly. It's both you and Bonita's fault that my lover dumped me. If only Bonita would have been quiet and cooperated, none of it would have happened. The thief of my happiness must be punished. You're still singing that tune? You're the reason all this happened. You and your affair. Really? If we're going to play the blame game, let me ask you, who is the one who couldn't satisfy me? You! Which makes you the worst one of us all. It's your fault I couldn't lead a stimulating life. Well, you and you know who. Fine, I don't mind being the bad guy. Don't mind? Are you implying you're not the bad guy? I'm warning you, don't patronize me. I'm begging you, leave Bonita alone. I don't want her to suffer anymore. No, no, no. She's the one person in the world who doesn't deserve happiness. She can't be happy. Does it make you happy to make Bonita miserable? That's right. And you know, I'll do anything for my happiness. I thought you knew that. By the way, where is everyone? I'm in the waiting room for the family members, but there's no one here. It's so quiet, I can't believe a wedding's going to take place here today. Hey, why aren't you here? Isn't it obvious? It's because there's a dangerous woman carrying a weapon. Weapon? Whatever do you mean? Even if I were to be carrying something, do you know I am here in the waiting room for the family members? Isn't that strange? But a staff member escorted me to this room. Anyhow, get over here now. Oh, maybe. Are you waiting for me to leave the church? Sorry to disappoint you, but I won't be leaving anytime soon. Please don't leave. Or to be more precise, I don't think you can leave. Ah, uh, whatever do you mean? The police should be arriving about now. Sit quietly and wait for them. 
Police? We, the church staff, and I reported you. We saw you carrying a knife on the surveillance camera. Wait a second. The door won't open. Of course. We've locked it from the outside. There's no way we'd allow a criminal to wander around freely. You can't leave that room and go home. Criminal? But I haven't done anything. It's against the law to carry a weapon. Plus, you threatened Bonita. I saw the chat with my own eyes. I was just joking. There's no way the police will think I was being serious. Stop fooling around and let me out of this room. That's not for you to decide. I don't see the point. It's not like I hurt anyone. Such a shame. If only you'd have called the police after I hurt someone, then I really would have been in trouble. Even if the police apprehend me now, they'll quickly release me. You still don't understand the severity of your actions. What? It's attempted murder. You are really in trouble. Isn't this what you wanted? What I wanted? Wait, wait, wait a second. I haven't done anything yet. But like I said, I wasn't serious. Why don't you understand? I just wanted to threaten her a little bit, maybe get the wedding cancelled. You left your home with a weapon, brought the weapon to the church. You left your home with a weapon, brought the weapon to the church. It's obviously premeditated. Plus, if you only wanted to threaten her a bit, you didn't need to carry such a dangerous thing. It's just a prop. I brought it so the wedding would be cancelled. A prop? Then why didn't you use a fake knife? A fake knife doesn't have the same effect as a real one. I wasn't going to really use the knife. I, obviously, don't want to go to jail. Hey, did you really call the police? Hey, I'm talking to you. I hear some noises. On a final note, Vela, you'll never be happy. But for your stimulating life, I think you may have found it. Enjoy your extraordinary life in prison. Upon learning that mother, in other words, Melon, was on her way, my husband and I reached out to our visitors. Father went to the church to clarify the situation. During his conversation with the wedding coordinator regarding the potential presence of Melon at the church, Melon suddenly appeared at the venue. Evidently, she was unaware that the wedding had been called off. A staff member escorted Melon to a waiting area equipped with a surveillance camera. On the security monitor, they observed Melon extracting a knife from her bag. They promptly notified the police about the situation. For the next few days, Dad and I were frequently at the police station, cooperating with statements and answering questions. During the trial, Melon was found guilty of attempted murder and received a 25-year prison sentence. While I haven't fully forgiven her for the wedding cancellation, I find solace in knowing she's now incarcerated. Incidentally, due to this incident, Aunt Mela and my grandparents have chosen to sever all connections with her. Even if she's released from prison, there won't be anyone willing to assist her. She has ultimately vanished from my life. Oh, and the other day, we were finally able to celebrate our wedding. Moving forward, my dad, my beloved husband, and his family, we all commit to finding happiness.